So our next, our next speaker is uh, Rowan. He will be talking uh, about Arduino and a little bit different perspective from what we usually see and how we can use it. He is also a member of BAN and uh, CTO of Science Technology. So please welcome him. Thank you very much indeed. As was said, um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm here with two hats today. One is a member of the uh, BAN. And before I say what BAN is, are there any Bulgarian people here? Are there any non-Bulgarian people here? Cool. Ah, oh, and me, of course. Yeah. Um, Bulgarian Academy of Sciences is BAN. It's uh, a group of people getting ever older. And uh, when I went there, I see some smiles. When I went to BAN, the Bulg Bulgarian Academy of Sciences, I said to my friends who were not Bulgarian, I'm going to the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. And they went, wow. When I told my Bulgarian friends, they went, why? <laughs> and, uh, but actually, within the group of BAN, there are some diamonds. Um, I'm very lucky to work in one small team of the Mechanics Institute, and it's the Mechatronics Department. And we're doing some pretty cool stuff, I think. And one of the things I'll uh, set out to you in a while. But the Arduino and the Arduino IDE. I only got to know Arduino and Arduino IDE about ooh, two years ago, after almost 50 years in this, uh, 50 years in this business. Have I got audio, or should I just speak loud? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, cool. And that was when I was tired to go to the programmers and saying, would you please write me a bit of code that would do this? Can you t please tell me which parameters I need to change this? And uh, somebody introduced me to Arduino. And it was a great day, one I enjoyed very much indeed. And I'm still playing with it and other things. So what is Arduino? I'm sure you all know. Anybody not know what Arduino is? Hey, good man. <laughs> you do joke. But we can spend a minute uh, covering it if you, if you need to. Um, Arduino developed, what, 13 years ago? Came into the market 13 years ago? Uh, there are various numbers about the amount of them that there are around. Uh, the one that I saw said something like uh, 1.3 million. Then I saw another that said 2.4 million. And that, of course, didn't include all of the, the copy boards. And within our own little laboratory there, we've got one original Arduino and about 15 or 16 different versions of, of copy boards. So the true number of people using these things, I'm really not sure of. The IDE uh, is very, very good. Um, we used to work with Kale. We used to work with a number of other IDEs when we were doing the programmers, or the programmers did. And then when this IDE came up with all these nicely wrapped up little functions for us, it was a, a great day, a great day for me and uh, some people that I now know. So this integrated development environment, uh, I just want to concentrate on the last word there, environment. And the word I'm choose an environment for is because it's more than just on the computer. It's an environment that's growing. That's why you people are here today. You're here as a part of an environment, an open source environment, one where you don't mind sharing, and one where fortunately the Arduino people, and if you're one of them that's contributed to it, thank you for the libraries and so on. Um, but how does it help us? This environment helps us because it knocks down walls. It builds bridges. It allows us to do things today that we couldn't do yesterday. And for that, uh, I think we're all grateful. Now, there are many other uh, similar platforms that we can go to. It depends whether you're sort of Atmel, are you PIC, are you, what are you, you know, where's your, your heart in, in all of this? But some of the ways that it helps us aren't so obvious. And the not so obvious comes back to the word that I used of environment. So what does it offer as far as I'm concerned? Well, it more than an interface, so I said. And uh, I'll just use some obvious uses. In education, we're all familiar with this very nice screen that comes up. And educators all over the world. And one of the questions I want to ask, and I'll ask it again later, is how many educators are there here in the room? Good on you, chap. I probably think that there are more educators than the one that's put up his hand. Because you share information. If you share information, you're educating people. Whether it's with your friend, with your family, whoever it is, 
you're educating and they're educating you and that's the whole nature of what we do bringing people together you know, it's interesting for me to look down and see um, you all here and how we're all in different places and not all together and forgive me but I've been here in Bulgaria now for 14 years and one of the things I've noticed about it apart from very 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 many good things is that it's a country made up of, in the majority, individuals. And getting together isn't easy. However, this is one of the things that brings people together. And I've seen that, and I enjoy that, and that's what got me to be part of this. The IDEs, even for the children, this little block um, programming, really very, very good. Whoever came up with this, Genius, absolute genius. Uh, there are a number of them around. I've seen maybe five or six of these. They all work in a similar way. Um, even Lego use something similar to this. How many Legoites are there here? Anybody like Lego? Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, does it, didn't it just break the walls, Lego? You know, making it tech. Uh, with the backing of things like Coca-Cola, and going out there. A lot of my friends in the States, I lived and worked in the States for a few years, and everybody goes to Lego competitions. And that really did break down the walls of how things were going, what people were seeing, what they were doing, getting together as groups, looking at technology in a different way. Now that was fantastic. However, here in Bulgaria, I don't know if you know, but to buy a Lego kit, you know, with its brain, 1,200 lever. Man, it just seems a bit heavy to me. You know, it's the price, it's the standard price, but it's heavy. It's got, I think it's got six sensors that you can attach to it, you know. Um, again, difficult. You break it, uh, expensive. You want to connect something to it? You know, let's go SPI, let's go I2C, let's go, you know, some other means of communication. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. And now you look on the internet and there's hacks everywhere. Let's hack your Lego. Well, very fortunately for me, about six months ago, a friend who I'd known for about two years, David Hampson, was running a foundation. The foundation was looking at taking science to kids, and he came to me and said, oh, we've you know, bought a Lego kit, and we've trained four, um, four mentors. And it was like, well, how much did that cost you? And he said, well, it was 1,200 for the kit. I almost fell over backwards. I said, well, you know, there's better ways of doing this. And one of the ways was Arduino. So we're now putting out kits for 250 lever, and we're hitting kids all over Bulgaria. Now that's really good, because it's part of this social, this environmental, this uh, development thing. I've hit back. I'm meant to hit forward. Any of you use this program that's just come up here? MATLAB, Simulink. Hey, <laughs> super. I mean, the tie-in between Arduino, MATLAB, and Simulink, I mean, stunningly good. Within our own little uh, group down there, we've just, uh, this is the bit about the project that we've got, we've just won a project which starts in February, um, and we're working with DLR. Now, DLR is a German um, entity. It's the equivalent of the American NASA. They do all sorts of really cool stuff. Um, we're also working with the Von Kármán Institute from Belgium. Now, they're the foremost people, I think, in the world for computational fluid dynamics. They're very, very good indeed. And they've chosen our little three-person group to do the mathematic modeling for the aerodynamics for a tow craft and a relaunchable, um, relaunchable vehicle for a rocket. What we're going to do, I'm going to tell you because it's just exciting, I think, at the moment, when these rockets take off, satellite bit goes, the rest of it comes to Earth, again, as law dictates, and there's always damage. Some of it's total, some of it's just extremely expensive. What we're going to do, he says, you know, fingers crossed, is we're going to go, go up there, and with a tow aircraft, a Jumbo 747, we're going to actually drop an arm, and through the top of its ballistic trajectory, we're actually going to grab hold of it and we're going to tow it away, and then it's going to drop with parachutes. Now, I think that's pretty damn good if it works. We're doing the mathematic modeling, we're also doing the optical device for it, and we're doing all of the software and the hardware is ours. But Arduino is in there, and that's a good thing. 
what is even better is that we, a little group, okay, um, but we're in Bulgaria and we're bringing international stuff here, as are other members of the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. Not many, but we are. This little thing uh, doesn't reflect uh, what we're doing, uh, except in part. The, the image refers to the stresses and strains on, on the body, and that's part of the mathematic modeling that we're doing, because we want to see what this jumbo jet's going to do with the uh, best part of 86 tons being towed behind it. So we'll see. They're very strong aircraft, and uh, we're going to be doing it as radio control first. So there's the science, the social integrator. Um, the social integrator bit is, again, the bit that I'm going to go more towards now and away from Arduino as such and take you towards the, the social implications. The integrator, um, for me, I've started now interacting with people far younger than myself. I'd never taught anybody that was less than 14 years old. More recently, every Tuesday and Wednesday, we now go and we teach kids from six upwards to 18, just before they go into uni. And I'm going to tell you about one young lady, six years old, didn't even know her um, alphabet in Bulgarian. And she's there as a part of a group. We've taken them Arduinos, we've covered them in the acrylic um, covers so that when they drop them, you know, they, they don't break them too easily. And we send them away, and off they go, and we're doing sound on this particular day. So we cover sound, you know, how fast is it? What happens when it hits different temperatures? Uh, you know, different materials that it goes through. What does it mean if I stand here a second away, and how long is it going to take? Basic stuff. But for kids, it was really, really good. You know, and it's like, well, how can we use it? Where does nature use it? So we had all the, ah, dolphini, tuk tam nyakate niema, stores richne, stores and it's really, really good from them because, one, they get to know the technical English. And the other thing is they get to do stuff. So we give them all an ultrasonic sensor. We give them all some cables, and we give them a picture on the, on the wall. About four or five minutes later, this dot, and, you know, Mignonche in the Bulgarski, she's like this big, and she's as cute as pie. And she walks up to me with this Arduino like this. And she says, I've broken it. And I was just like, well, let's take a look. So she snapped off the cable ends in the headers. She said, ah, oh, don't you worry. You know, I've got another one here. You can have that. And she was like, oh, that's really cool. Off she goes, and she's the third kid to put this thing together. And she's measuring every damn thing. You know, there it is on the old serial monitor. And she's like, oh, three meters, two meters. You know, and she's engaged. And that was really, really good six years old. I was absolutely blown away. And it completely changed my view on what we should be hitting these kids with. Because now, you know, I'm 61 years old. When I was six, did that technology exist? Maybe for the military. But for us, like, you know, normal people, absolutely not a chance. So now we've introduced these kids to just one of these bags of 37 sensors. You know, you buy them for like 18 bucks and you just give them to them. And they're connecting them to all sorts of things. They're thinking of things and ways to use this. And this is where I think it's very, very useful for us to give this leg up to the young. And, you know, in my heart, I'm young as well. And I've been given a leg up by Arduino. Because now I can program in C, I can do Perl, I can do other bits and pieces, C++ and stuff, that two years ago, had it not been for Arduino, I would never ever have entered that because that would have been like, you know, behind the wall, and that wasn't where I lived, so I didn't go there. But now I do. So I appreciate it greatly, and so do these kids. So a, a quick QA should come up. So in the ed education, I've asked those educators, can I just ask you what your most recent project was as an educator? Da. Well, currently I'm working with raspberry Pi, but uh, for Arduino we are doing robotic stuff, you can do programming with raspberry Pi. Cool. Absolutely cool. Thank you for doing that. That's just like really good. With, with who? I have a training center and I have students. Good man. Yeah. 
I'm, that's kind of what we're doing. You know, we're following this STEAM model. Yeah. Super. That's stunningly good. And do you find it that they're taking it on well? Are they, are they people yes. that have had any previous experience? Yes. Yeah. Actually, no. I'm, we're teaching people how to 3D print as well, because it's not so hard. OK. So for example, I find out that buying robotics from stores is, is quite expensive, 100 bucks and more. So yep. we decided, why don't we build our robots ourselves with 3D printing technology, Arduino and Raspberry Pi. Congratulations. That, that's really, really good. Really, really good. Thanks for sharing that. Um, some of the barriers. I'll talk about some of the barriers, and that's at the, uh, the upper end. It's either too complicated, too far away, too expensive. You know, that there are some of the barriers that I think very quickly we could all maybe um, identify with. But uh, some of the positives. It's without end. We can go on and on about the, po the positives. But educating kids now to deal with this technical world that we live in, and you know, we all know, but forgive me for saying, we all interact with various microcontrollers every single day, whether we want to or we don't. Pick up our phone, we've got a quad core in there under like 2.8 gig or more. We've got all sorts of things in our refrigerator, microwave, and everywhere else. We can't help but go away from it. And here in Bulgaria, um, and because so many of you are Bulgarian, you know, you, you'll be sensitive to the fact that our current education system does not allow for that possibility to go to the people who are going to be tomorrow. And I'm tired of people saying, you know, well, they're the next generation, they're the ones. Well, we are the current ones. We are the current generation. We are the ones that will be making the change. We are the ones that need to be uncomfortable for so that they can do something. And we've got great facilities here in Sofia, you know, Museico, Science Museum. It, I, I don't know what to say about the place, except that I went in there with um, a friend of my girlfriend's son. <laughs> and they've got a bit of a clip of me sitting on the tractor trying to get it to go. You know, it's all about mechanics. It's all about physics. It's all about space. It's all about those really cool things that we all want to be part of doing something with. So that's just one thing. We've got people like the gentleman at the back. We've got you all, you know, with this collective mentality. And this is one of the things that I like to bring here. So science, yes, we've said it's used. Why is it used? I'll talk for our little uh, group. We use it because it's cheap, it's fast, and it's really, really dependable. We're, you all probably spread out, yeah, from Arduino, and you've gone towards, for those that aren't pick oriented or maybe if you are, the ESP, Espresso stuff, you know, the ESP32s, the ESP8266s, these boards, these development boards. ESP32 uh, 32 at the moment is my absolute favorite. There it is, it's got a dual core on there, it's got low, po uh, low power, normal Bluetooth, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got six uh, capacitive touch uh, sensors, it's got a Hall effect sensor, it's got all sorts of stuff that you can use and kids can use and the best thing is that you can do it through the Arduino IDE. Now that's again in the space of six months that has gone from being a separate shell that you run and you go in and you part to be a fully integrated part of almost every IDE that I know. Now that's really really powerful and that's because people want it, they like it and especially, I'm going to come back to, to Bulgaria, it's cheap. You know, how much is Arduino IDE? Free. No better price. You can do it online. You can do it on your phone. You know, instead of the you or I, and my girlfriend will tell you, there was a period that I went through that every moment that my eyes were awake that I wasn't doing something else, I was looking in my phone and I was programming. And those programs that had mistakes in that are online probably taught me more than the example code that was correct. So even the bad stuff that you download is good, especially if you're determined to get it going. Social integrator. Well, I've said something about what I mean, but how can this make a difference? Would I ever have gone teaching kids, so I'm looking at the both ends of the scale now, from 10 times younger than me, if it hadn't been for Arduino? Not to the same degree. So it's a big bridge built. 
Now, together with that comes the fact that, you know, Nikkov star, it's tam diado, kakfuz nice, there's an asher about the nishto. But these, these grandfathers do know something. These grandfathers do have stuff. And they've got patience normally. Other people are busy. You know, we're not so. Geez, I work in ban. You know, <laughs> how, how busy can you be? <laughs> it's, I went to an early morning meeting one day, 11.30. <laughs> I almost fell over. It was like, really? God damn. But at the same time, there are people that do do stuff there. Uh, you know what happens? You, know, you get so, so very close to the edge that something changes and you either fall off or you come back. That's where Ban is. And they've been walking on that particular line for a number of years. But that doesn't mean that we should throw them away. There will be nat nat uh, you know, natural wastage. Some of the people that need to go will go. Jeez, there's, oh, can I tell you? Yeah, I probably can. There's an academic there, okay? And he wants to put a balloon on a robot to save energy. The fact that the balloon is going to be bigger than the room that the robot is in to support its weight has got nothing at all to do with it. And it's just like, where's the guy get off? You know, what is he thinking about? And then you've got the other people, and we've got some really good PhD students in our building, and they're currently working with graphene. They're making nanotubing. They've produced a 3D printable material that is that might be interesting for other people doing 3D. There's a, a, a material called black magic. It's made in the US. And the very good thing about it, it's conductive. Now, as well as being conductive, it's also very, very good at blo blocking radio frequencies. And you can block these radio frequencies at different frequencies depending on how you print. If you print with a particular pattern inside to a particular depth, you can stop into the gigahertz. If you do it smaller, you can stop into the terahertz. Now, that's really, really cool. And somebody over there has made a bunch of money. A Chinese delegation come to our institute the other week. And there's two of us. There's us who do drones and anything without a pilot. And there's the lady from the graphene department. And she suddenly says, well, we've got this material that we can, you know, we can do this, this, and this, which are all the things I've just told you. And it's just like, well, there's one of the material in the world that does this. And it's just like, yeah, I know, but we need to market it. It's like, jeez, you know, the, the scientists, they're great at like being scientists, but you need a leg now in business and a leg in science, you know, and if you had three legs, you'd need it there, you know, aware of where we're going. But they're doing all of this. They've got the material and it's cheaper than the American. It's as good as the American. So it's got a place in the market and that's happened here in Bulgaria. So be proud of that because it's very, very good. Is it important? Absolutely. Uh, a common language, and you know I'm not talking C, C++, Python or anything else. Uh, what does it bring, this common language? It brings this together. That's what it does. It brings all of this together. It brings the old, the young, the black, the white, the males, the females. The, you know, gender's a big question, so let's just include everybody. Because we should, we should be very inclusive. And all of you being here today are part of that inclusiveness. Is it beneficial? I've answered it, but I come and I keep and I reaff you know, reaffirm it. Yes, it's beneficial. It might not be obvious to us all today the different ways in which this is beneficial, but it is beneficial. To the younger members of our audience, you know, you're going to live with this for a long, long time. And having the mentality of being inclusive and developmental is going to be very, very important. For those of you in your mid-period of life, where you're looking at work, you're looking at doing something better, you're looking at getting yourself a pension together, it's beneficial. And for us, it's beneficial. So, yes. Now, designers. It was originally, as we've uh, covered on, done for designers. More and more designers now, and you probably know a bigger list than I do, but whether you're making clothing, you're making something for the house, you're making something for the car, you're making something for an aircraft, for radio control, hobby, for, I don't know, cutting hair, chances are there's going to be something in there that's going to be micro-controlled or that's going to give some feedback or that we want the information for over the internet or just for fun. Uh, I've gone backwards again. Programmers, it's obvious. We've already covered it. 
And we're coming to an interesting bit. Two more slides, a really interesting bit. This young guy, though, you know, there is an engineer, but he's not the engineer that I want to touch on today. He's important because he's young. And going again to this inclusiveness, I want to talk about this guy. Now, this guy is so old, he died three years ago. But he's a Bulgarian. Anybody know his name? Vidin Tabakov. Vidin Tabakov. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. Born up near Vidin in 1919. 1939, after being educated here and gone through gymnasia, he goes to Prague and he does his doctorate there. He does it in aerodynamics. His special love is rocket engines. One of the people who was at the defense of his dissertation was a guy called Von Braun. Somebody knows who he is, for sure, yeah? Can you just tell us quickly who he is, Von Braun? Oh, good man, exactly. <laughs> yeah, in many ways, the father of the U.S. space program. Absolutely. Well, he's there, and he likes what he sees. And then he forgets about him. Young Vidin Tabakov goes off into Germany, and this is while ever there was still this USSR, and there was the rest, and the Second World War was going on. So, he gets married to a German lady, they have a child, and then because of friends that he has with the Czech Republic, they give him a document, a false document, which is actually here in Bulgaria now. Our foundation brought back his papers and his works from the US, and there's an exhibition here going around Bulgaria at the moment. And that document allowed them to go out of this environment into that environment. And they go to Argentina. He does some work on rockets and things. And while he's doing that, Von Braun, who has now, because of the end of the war, decided to go west with the Americans, is in NASA. And they've got this problem with the, what was at the time the largest machine and the most powerful machine ever made by man, and that was the Saturn V rocket. What's happening is because of deposition and erosion of high-speed particles in the gas flow, they keep blowing up motors. And they can't get these motors, which are like you know, this big at the nozzle, to do anything. And then Von Braun thinks to himself, ah, there was that kid. I remember him. And he traces him back. He chases back uh, Vidin Tabakov, who is now Widin Tabakov. He's anglicized his name a little bit to make it easier to get out. And he's down in Argentina. Brings him up to some army base where his wife and his child go, there is no way on earth I'm living here. So, of course, the man being the head and the woman being the neck, she turns him where she wants to go, and they go away from where they are. And they go up to Cincinnati, which at the time in America was one of only two universities actually running an aerospace department. Vidin Tabakov works together with the team, and they, they resolve the problem. He becomes lifelong friends with um, Neil Armstrong, and Neil Armstrong goes on to do great things. Vidin Tabakov, through his courses, puts through more than 1,500 PhD students. He does free education. He has 400 patents with everything from refrigeration to rocketry. He did, in the 1960s, experiments at hypersonic speeds with models that they did with lookup tables that are still being used today because nobody can better them. Now, that's one cool dude. If you can do that, you've, you really know what you're talking about. The whole facility has brought in more than, I think it's 250 million in backing to do projects. And the guy, most of all, I like, he said, if you retire at 65, it's a waste of a good brain. And he went on into his 90s to do this. Now, near the end, I'll show you a little bit of a, a film if we have time because I've got 11 minutes and seven, six, six, five, six, five, four, three, two seconds. So anyway, so with all of this going on, this is what we would hope, I think, to be the answer. Instead of people being unemployed, they become employed. We hate, within our, you know, we, the collective we, we hate the fact that when you're young and you apply for a job and it says one year's experience required, you think, I've just left school, you know, where do I get the experience? So one of the things that it might be good for yourself, the, the other educator in the room, apart from the others, 
is with our particular um, take on STEAM, we include competencies. And within the competencies, we're also working together with various agencies to have competencies seen as the equivalent of experience in work. So that if you go through this type of education, you accrue competencies, you hit the workplace, and ta-da, I'm ready. You know, I can work with microcontrollers, I know what simple electronic circuits are, I can work with glues, materials, you know, all of these things to get this to change, because that's one of the, the barriers that we can actually do something about knocking, knocking them down. So, it should change, moving things forwards. Yeah, enjoyable and developmental, it is. Anything that you do with these things is. It's also as frustrating as hell, isn't it? You know, you've forgotten to put the semicolon at the end of the line. There's 2,000 lines of code. <laughs> now, somewhere in there isn't something that there should be, or I've put a second bracket somewhere, and it's now thrown me off onto another library somewhere or another sheet of... Um, so it's... But it's good. Um, inclusive, mentally. I keep using the word, and I know I'm reinforcing, so please forgive me, but inclusive. And actions need to be done. Where's my evidence for this? I've given it to you already. Little girl, old chap. Big community, small community. Here in Bulgaria, you know, how many regions have we got? The provinces, they call it, don't they? You know, the provinces. Where are you? I'm in the provinces. Well, out in the provinces are kids with brains that will knock you and me off seats. But they haven't been exposed to this stuff. Give them the chance they'll knock us off seats. And the sooner I get knocked off, the better, because I'll get back on again, and somebody else can come and knock me off. And so will you, because you enjoy doing what you're doing. What next? Well, while this may not have been, and I'll write it up here, while this may not have been what you thought you were coming in for, hopefully it's been, one, enjoyable, two, developmental, you know, and all these nice things. Uh, please get involved as a user, an educator, a carer, a family member, you know, whatever it is. Try and spread the word a little bit, gently so that we don't upset people. But where there's a hunger, please try to feed it. Can you be too young or too old? Is it too late? No. This is a very happy family because it's not too late for them. And what I would like to show you now is not this one, but this one. Now, here, I think I probably need to start this. If it goes off, forgive me. There we go. We should have sound somewhere. Should be playing. It was playing before. This is why I played you as a test. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go to the actual file itself. If you see downloads before I do, tell me, folks. Downloads. Technology, you've got to love it. Hey, well, there we go. We've got some sort of a link. Okay, let's do it to you. Matt, we, we tried it just before the, the actual start, and it was, it was fine. But I appreciate your input. Well, there's five minutes left.
Yeah, if you want, we can move to the questions in that time, and then if we have time left, we can check the video. Good man. So, uh, any questions? Yes, sir. All right, come in. And we have the video. Okay, uh, it's more like a statement, not a, just a question, but if you like to contribute more to the education, the easiest way to do it in Bulgaria is to record a five minute or 10 minute YouTube video on your experiments with Arduino, Raspberry Pi, robotics or whatever, and put it on YouTube and share it with your friends, your teachers. And stuff. Because the main obstacle for young people to learn robotics and other stuff is the language barrier. Yes. Everything is in English actually and very few materials in Bulgaria. So write about it in Bulgaria and make a short video in Bulgaria that will help a lot to the community. Точно така. Много е важно. It's a very good point. The actual presentation will be available at some point and the, the bits of the presentation that might be interesting for you to go to are the final video which will introduce you to Vidin Tabakov and what he did here and the other one is just a uh, a feel-good video, so we're not really missing very much indeed. We'll call that it. Thank you for your technical endeavours, but we've got like seven seconds, six seconds, five seconds. No, it's okay. <laughs> so thank you very much indeed. We'll call that a day. Thank you.